Hi, welcome to Programming with Mesh. In this session, we get acquainted with the state and its usage, and how we can use the state to display the values dynamically in the output. At the end of the video, I have planned an exercise for you that you can do to fully understand the content of this session. In the previous session, we got acquainted with the structure of a React Native project and worked with the basic components of React Native in the form of an example. Now, in the continuation of the previous example, we will get acquainted with the state. There are two types of data, a state and props in React Native, which control the component. A component that uses the state is mutable. It can be changed later on if required. The props component is immutable and it's fixed throughout the lifetime. We will talk about props in the future. Before, React Native suggested React component to create a page, but in newer versions, it announced that it would expand with React Hook, but React still supports the component. Because many classes with component, they have been written and he doesn't intend to rewrite them. Hooks are functions that let you hook into React state and lifecycle features from function components. Hooks don't work inside classes. They let you use React without classes. Well, we open the previous session project and apply our changes to it. I close the sidebar to have more space to work. I will delete this comment that was related to creating a new project. To use hook state, we import user state from React. Now we want to change this text, which we have defined statically, so that it can be changed dynamically. At the beginning of the function and before the return, we define a const. We define the first parameter as name and the second as set name. These names are quite optional, but it's better to name them based on their usage. We set this const equal to the user state. The value at the input will be the initial value of the name. In fact, we can now use the name parameter dynamically in this function. That means we can change its value as long as this page is running. I change the text and use it where I want to use the name parameter. As you can see in the output, the initial value we defined for the name is displayed instead. Now let's change the name value by clicking this button. I change the title of the button to be relevant to our subject. And I delete the function we defined in onPress to replace it with another function. As before, we can define the function in line. But for better readability and better performance, I define the function separately and use it here. I put the name of the function on click handler. And at the top of return, I define it as a const in the form of an arrow function. We can just use the name as text and change it. In the function we defined, we use the second parameter of the state to change the value of the state. Enter the value, we want to replace the previous value as its input. Now by pressing the button, we see that the value of the state changes and the new value is displayed. In fact, by changing the value of the state, the content inside the return is rebuilt. A state can accept a variety of variables. For example, we create a state with the value of the object that indicates the session number and its title. The default value is the number and title of this session. We create a text similar to the name to display the content of the session. Here, when we enter the state and then put a dot, we see the content of the object and we can select the desired item. Well, now in onClick Handler, we change the value of the session. For example, we enter the next session. Now by clicking the button, we expect the name and session values to be updated. That's what happened. 
Each time the app is refreshed or the page is reloaded, the asset values will be the default values. And just by clicking the button, the values will be updated for the life of this page. Let's try another type at a state. This time we save a boolean value in the state and use it in the text display. I name it current and I want to show us if we are in current session or in the next session. So I set it to the default value because the previous default values also refer to the current session. We create another text and this time we use a conditional expression. If the current state is true, we want the current session phrase to be displayed and if it's false, the next session phrase to be displayed. Then in onclick handler, we change the value of the state to false. The names in the state parameters are completely optional and we don't need to use the set at the beginning of the second parameter. However, related names help make the code more readable. Well, now by pressing the button, we see that the current state value is falsified and the text of the next session is displayed. We can also delete unused imports. Well, now I leave you with an exercise to better understand this session. Of course, its source code is available in the GitHub repository of this tutorial series, and you can find it from the branch of this session with the extension practice. Use a state to create a counter that increases the text counter by 5 by pressing a button and show the number of clicks in a separate counter. So there we go, we got acquainted with the state and its function. So in the next video, we become more familiar with the style and its features so that we can customize the look of the page. Now if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like and I'll see you in the next session.